Today is another controversial topic. If it fit your macros, does this diet lifestyle work? Let's throw the clock on and let's get started. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. We do health tip trick and hack videos and myth buster videos just like this one every week. So shall we get myth busting and figure out whether this is myth or a fact? As always, these videos have a subject, in this case, if it fit your macros and what are calories. Then we move on to the facts, the figures and the opinions. And lastly, the long awaited conclusion or the verdict, whether there's a myth or a fact. So with no further ado, let's dive in. So what is a if it fit your macros diet? A diet based on calorie restriction and macro nutrition division. This type of diet seems very appealing to majority of individuals as this does not restrict the type of foods that go into your diet. Its only restriction is the number of calories and ensuring that those calories are split across carbs, proteins and fats as per defined on your diet. And calories on the other hand is a unit of energy. We simmer down the food that we eat to units of calories or units of energy. And the current interpretation in the industry is that higher levels of calories lead to obesity, autoimmune disease, heart conditions, diabetes, etc. So if this is the only case and restricting your calories irrespective of the food type is the case, does if it fit your macros diet work? Let's figure out. Fact number one, energy. Calories are indeed a source of energy. But the problem here is we oversimplify the value of food by looking at it through a lens of calories. And it is true, an overconsumption or a underconsumption of calories will result in obesity or malnutrition respectively. The challenge, however, is no matter how hard we try, we cannot accurately define the amount of calories that are either in the food types that we absorb or the calories burned by our activities as it ranges on a daily basis with minute to large changes from mood to exercise to the type of food you consume or the weather that you're in. And most importantly, not all calories consumed have an identical impact on your health. Number two, junk food and a cheating mindset. With oversimplifying the value of food, we almost look at it as if a stale donut with sprinkles is the same as a banana and almonds. However, from a nutritional perspective, they're on very wide spectrums. As just purely breaking down them from carbs, proteins and fats doesn't really equate the value of nutrition. Counting calories allow you to consider junk food as a food choice and thereby force you to get into a mindset of ineffective eating. To make things worse, by considering processed and addictive food, you're moving away from a healthy relationship with food and complete food freedom. Number three, inaccurate calories. Calorie labels are indicative, they're never accurate. There's been numerous amount of studies, couple of them linked below. In some instances, the deviations range from 15 to 25% upwards. So even if you are counting calories, you might just end up over consuming. What are you gonna do if you go into a restaurant which doesn't have a calorie count on their a la carte menu? Are you gonna carry along with you a little tiny scale and move the potatoes from your plate onto the scale to measure the amount of carbs that you eat? doesn't really sound like food freedom to me. Number four, non-intuitive eating. When you look at food just purely on macros, you completely avoid thinking about micronutrients, which are a equally important part of your diet. Micronutrients play a important part from your neurological health to your bone health. So to get a complete profile of nutritionally dense food, we need to consider whole foods, not processed foods, which are packaged and you can throw into a microwave for the convenience. Number five, misaligned metabolic rate. We tend to abuse the resting metabolic rate 
resting metabolic rate, meaning the number of calories or the energy that you expend if you are lying down over the course of 24 hours or sleeping during the 24 hours. By restricting calories, we might abuse the existing metabolic rate and result in a lowering of your resting metabolic rate, which tends to be counterproductive for what you're trying to do. Because usually if you fit your macros are chosen to either lose weight or the flexibility of the diet. And in addition to that, with the restriction of calories comes the challenges of sustainability and motivation to continue doing this to lose weight or feel comfortable. Also, just over restricting particular types of macros, may it be fats or carbs, would have detrimental effects on your health. For example, every cell membrane in our body is made out of fat, so fat is equally important and your brain functions are dependent on the availability of glucose. So fats, carbs and proteins are equally important and just eating a diet focused on proteins doesn't necessarily result in muscle growth and general health benefits. Number six, unsustainable. When you're restricting calories, you're playing a catch the tail game, which wouldn't allow you food freedom. And our body is a bit more complicated than just a number of calculated calories to be the perfect world. What are you gonna do when you travel? If the food doesn't have a label, what are you gonna do is just starve or guess? You're bound to overestimate or underestimate. Or are you gonna make it a lifelong ambition to carry a weight scale, ensure that you read all the labels, update them on your phone app? That just does not sound like a sustainable way of dieting for us. It only takes out the willpower that you could alternatively spend on something more productive. Number seven, health. When you open yourself up for calorie restriction, you tend to move towards alternatives which are either low in fat or low in sugar. These additional chemicals used to reduce the sugar content or the fat content have been directly linked to autoimmune diseases, kidney failure, heart disease, diabetes, etc. If you wanna check out, we've done a separate video, for example, talking about the fact that diet drinks do not help you lose weight on a separate Mythbuster video linked below. Number eight, stress. This one's simple. Eating whole foods will eliminate the need to count calories because you have a larger sense of satiety and a satisfaction. Number nine, negative calories meaning the amount of calories associated with the food is less than the amount of calories expended to digest those foods. So technically, you'll be better off. And in addition to that, these foods contain a high level of fiber and are low in the glycemic index. And just like always, all the supporting material and the research is linked in the description below. With all that said, do you now think that we are ready to bust this myth? If it fits your macros, does it work? No, not in the long term. Yes, it would work in the short term if your primary goal is just to restrict weight and see a couple of pounds lose off. With the side effect of worsening your health, worsening your relationship with food, and even building habits to consistently continue considering junk food as a option. Alternatively, a more sustainable and a satisfied method would be moving away from calorie restriction, macronutrient definition, onto whole foods where you don't need to count calories. That's it for this video. If you like this video, comment, like, and share. And we'll see you in the next video.